Right, so whilst the repellent, overrepresented billionaire class of our rubbish media, along with their pet Tories, berate those on strike, particularly our NHS staff, stories of critical incidents are popping up in healthcare all across the UK, and there will be some who will take the opportunity of such stories to blame those taking strike action for these critical incidents occurring. They will look at those saying they are on strike because the service is unsafe and jeer at them saying, you're now making the service even less safe by not doing your jobs, aren't you? So it's really all about pay, like the former editor of the Murdoch Sun or some other brainwashing piece of filth telling you and even encouraging you to hate the very people who keep us well when it's becoming ever more difficult for them to be able to actually do so. The worse conditions are made for health workers, the more they are put upon, the more will leave, because ultimately they have to live too. Without meaningful, swift measures to bring back staff we've lost, we cannot wait up to 10 years to train enough from scratch, no matter what politicians might say, the more agency staff will need to be brought in, which costs a lot more, because the agency needs its cut, and the agency workers, many of whom will be former NHS workers, require better pay than they get in the service to make it worth their while. 25,000 nurses and midwives left the service last year alone. There are 47,000 nursing and midwifery vacancies right now. This is so much bigger than being just about pay. All of these issues, yes, on pay, but more importantly, the safety of the service are things that healthcare workers have been warning us, government and the media are about, telling us what would happen, resulting in patient safety being compromised as it is, because these critical incidents have been going on for a lot longer than this strike action has, and their warnings have been falling on deaf ears for years. The priority for 12 long years of Tory government has been to sell the NHS off in piecemeal, not making it a service that runs in the interest of all of our health. And why would they, when many of them will go private, able to afford to as they are, not only on the high wages they get already, but the fact they're all around £20,000 a year better off today than they were when the Tories came in, because MPs kept awarding themselves inflation-busting pay rises, whilst the rest of us suffered pay freezes, benefit freezes and rampant austerity, making us all poorer for a decade ahead of this cost of living crisis, bringing everything to a head. NHS staff since 2010 have lost around 19% of their spending power and both main parties say they can't afford to give them that now or even a compromise offer put down when it's a political choice not to pay it because the money is always there. But the lobbying and donations of private health care infect both the Tories and Labour these days. It's little surprise they both sim sing from the same hymn sheet on unaffordability. Pay, however, no matter how much the likes of Kelvin McFilth calling ambulance drivers vile and the rest of the right-wing media mouthpieces fixate on that, is not the main driver of these strikes, or indeed many other industries and services taking industrial action. But as far as NHS workers go, the critical incidents and the compromising of patient safety are, and this is why nurses are striking, some for the first time in their lives, and ambulance workers are for the first time in some 30 years. They've endured the same financial hardship, if not worse, that so many of us have. They've been in queues to food banks, but it's patient safety that has tipped them over the edge. Fewer staff where they are needed means patients must travel further for the treatment they need. One of my sons needs orthodontic treatment due to being born with a cleft lip and palate. The Royal Cornwall Hospital no longer has an orthodontist that can address that. He's now having to look at going to Derriford in Plymouth as a three to four hour round trip, depending on the traffic. Imagine if it was for more regular treatment though, something more serious. Actually, Cornwall's a really good case study for this. Cornwall is just one main hospital, the Royal Cornwall at Trelisk in Truro. We all remember the stories over the last several years of the queues of ambulances getting as many as 20 long, waiting to offload patients. It made national news after all. The hospital is now operating at critical incident level once again, and has been for the last two days. But this isn't unique to this time of year, or even this year. You might think, well, if things are so bad there, perhaps the nurses shouldn't have gone on strike. But not all nurses did because they give enough of a damn to ensure the service can still be delivered, albeit perhaps at a reduced level. The strike, therefore, wasn't a full walkout, but was strategic, so those in need still got help. In Cornwall, despite 92% of those RCN members who voted in Cornwall being in favour of strike action, they didn't take it. As part of the national picture, it was decided they wouldn't, at least not on this occasion. The service must still be delivered, patients must be protected. Still we have a government refusing to even negotiate with them when it is in their power to end this overnight. They have starved people from all walks of life, of income sufficient to meet the cost of living, and people simply cannot take any more. This has to change. People have to be able to afford to live, an honest day's pay for an honest day's work after all, and when that isn't happening, when people are struggling more and more, year on year, the social contract is broken, but we, the ordinary folk just trying to get by in our lives, are not the ones breaking it. 
The Tories are. That social contract goes beyond pay, though, because the NHS is our NHS, and it is not theirs to exploit and take and wreck and destroy and demean and put down and underfund and understaff, more interested in delivering a product to their donor mates in private health and US insurance conglomerates than delivering for the British people. Critical incidents are not unique to my corner of the country anymore. They are affecting everyone. Every single ambulance service in the country, except two, have declared critical incidents this winter. All hospitals in Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire have declared critical incidents. Cornwall, Shropshire, Worcestershire, West Birmingham, Kent, Wales, Yorkshire, Hampshire, the Isle of Wight and more are all seeing critical incidents being called in their NHS trusts because the services are becoming overwhelmed. It is lack of staff. Lack of investment, lack of training and rampant disincentivization by central government that is to blame. They are engineering the NHS to fail and the staff striking are fighting back against that. If you're attacking the staff, I hope you can afford private health care. I'm sure Kelvin McPhilth can. The one thing that isn't lacking in our NHS is the capacity to still care by those who have chosen as their vocation to help others. Health has always been so much more than just a job for the people who work in it. Still, the carers of this caring profession go above and beyond because even as they are forced into strike action as that last ditch, last resort course of action, they ensure the service keeps going and the stories are there of what they are doing, still putting to their patients first. The one story I'd like to mention that I learned of just this morning that I've been given permission to discuss on here is that of a young woman who had a double lung transplant due to cystic fibrosis. She's going through severe rejection, was rushed to the local hospital by the paramedics who arrived within five minutes. Such was the demand on the hospital emergency services yesterday when she got there, though, that she was to be left in the corridor. The paramedics refused to leave her, instead keeping her in their ambulance for two hours, keeping her treated with oxygen, antibiotics, got her on a drip until she could be admitted properly to an allocated bed. Going on strike does not mean these people do not care. It's because they do care that they have been left with no choice but to take this action of last resort now. They are literally all that stands between us and our health service completely collapsing. And it's only because they go above and beyond the stories like that show that it hasn't already done so. We have to keep supporting them. We have to keep giving our MPs, especially if you have a Tory one, short shrift until we win this with our NHS workers, for our NHS workers and ultimately for ourselves. This rancid government has got to be put in its place on this. They cannot be allowed to win or we will all lose.